Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, February the 10th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, mayors against illegal guns lose nearly 50 members after plans for gun confiscation are exposed. Then, Obama wants more drone strikes against Americans. And the TSA humiliates another victim. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. He had them sneaking around in secret meetings with the plan to register the guns, to confiscate them, to violate the civil rights of all Americans. Well, there's no doubt that the real agenda of gun control is outright confiscation. We see this from time to time surface. We see lies, we see semantics, we see people being trained to fear gun owners and both members of the public and members of the military. Now we have revelations from a mayor who was inside Bloomberg's group, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, the most well-financed and arguably the most influential of the gun control groups. He's come out as a whistleblower talking about what the real agenda is. This story from Kit Daniels, mayor says nationwide gun confiscation is the goal of Mayors Against Illegal Guns. This is the mayor of Poughkeepsie. He says this group was simply a vehicle for Bloomberg to promote his personal gun control agenda. And under the guise of helping mayors facing a crime and drug epidemic, MAIG intended to promote confiscation of guns from law-abiding citizens. Alex Jones has more information. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here with an emergency Second Amendment alert. If you get this information out to everyone you know, and if we force the pro gun press to cover this, this can be a major blow against the victim disarmament crowd who all have their own bodyguards and armored compounds like Mayor Bloomberg and of course Michael Moore. This is the political elite that seek to disarm their quarry. Ladies and gentlemen, a major mayor in New York State who was in on the Mayors Against Gun Violence meetings run by Handgun Control Incorporated, the Brady Center, and others, with Mayor Bloomberg, came out and said he left the group because the plan is not, quote, sensible gun control, but registration and then confiscation. Now, I know that most of you out there already know that's their plan. They've done it all over the world. They've done it in New York City, Chicago, anywhere they're in control. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a major blow against them right now because it shows their treachery. Now, remember, the mayor pro tem in Austin, Mike Martinez, last year made national news at a gun rally that we caught on tape. When people had signs saying no gun ban, he said, hey, after we register, we will confiscate. He's part of Bloomberg's national deal right here in Austin, Texas. So just like I told you the Copenhagen documents on global warming being fake and a power grab, just like I told you five years ago, that was huge and we pushed it out there, you pushed it out there, and it literally was like a Death Star being blown up event for the globalist empire, the corporatist, the monopoly men. This can be as big because it shows their plan, as Feinstein said, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in when they say, we're for your guns, just let us register them. Don't have private sales, just let us have a record. We don't, we'll never take them, we'll never take them. Again, this shows the general public they fooled how it's disingenuous. Here is the article right here, ladies and gentlemen. It is so incredibly, so incredibly important. Uh, mayor, nationwide gun confiscation is goal of mayors against illegal guns. The New York mayor says that he left the group over confiscation plans run by this literal seditious subverter. There's the uh, mayor pro tem saying they're gonna confiscate the guns after they registered in Austin that we caught on tape. This story at InfoWars.com needs to go mega viral, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Right now. Now, I'm taking off the radio show today to be with family who's in town. David Knight's doing the show, coming up in just about an hour and a half. Spread the word, InfoWars.com, the audio streams, and, and get this article and get it out to everyone you know. This is huge because it shows their deceit, their sneakiness, the manipulation. We're also gonna air this special report on the radio today for everybody before David Knight breaks down all the proof. But this is a big deal. It shows the treachery, the sneakiness, the underhandedness, the deceit. It discredits them, folks, just like Obamacare is a proven scam and a fraud written by these same offshore banks. They are looting us, and they don't want us to ever politically be able to take our country back. They want to use force on us, their homeland security, so they're moving to disarm us because as the UN has said, 
Civilian ownership of firearms threatens the legitimate power monopoly of the state. Well, that's called a dictatorship, and it's not legitimate. So again, ladies and gentlemen, there, there is the article right there. Please, please, please get it out to everyone you know. It is so incredibly important that, that, that we don't just let this opportunity to expose these rascals go by the wayside. It is so essential that you get this article out to everyone you know. It's up on Infowars.com. And remember, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. We can beat these people. <sighs> this is a big deal. Spread the word, folks. They're coming for our guns. Be the Paul Revere of the 21st century. You are. In the same article, the mayor of Poughkeepsie pointed out that there's 50 other mayors who have left the group for the same reason. Nearly 50 mayors have jumped ship on former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg's Mayors Against Illegal Guns campaign. He says, they've left the organization for the same reason I did. Now, the Supreme Court is also possibly going to consider two cases that are coming up, both of them touching on what does it mean to actually bear arms. We've had the Supreme Court clearly identify that it is a personal right. That's what they mean by right of the people. This really isn't that hard. It's really pretty easy, actually. It's only when you try to prevaricate and argue over semantics that it gets complicated, when they try to muddy the water. Now they're trying to argue that, yes, you can have guns, but you can only have them inside your house. You know, go get in the closet. Lock yourself in the closet. This is a civil rights issue. This is an issue where gun owners need to come out of the closet. And so it looks like these two cases, one of them at least may come before the Supreme Court. They say the explicit guarantee of the right to bear arms would mean nothing if not protecting the right to bear arms outside of the home, says the NRA. The most fundamental canons of construction forbid any interpretation that would discard this language as meaningless surplus. And then they point out in this Wall Street Journal article that the federal government wants the Supreme Court to take a pass. That's right. We don't want to actually look at this too carefully because it is so blazingly obvious what it means. And if they look at it carefully, they might also then start to look at what infringe means. And they might actually start to roll back some of these things like the New York Safe Act that were just put in, which is an obvious infringement that also is going to go to a court challenge this year. Now, we've seen this over and over again, and yet we've had yet another revelation of how they're going to use false flag events, how they're training the military to perceive gun owners, especially those who talk out about the Second Amendment, those who are talking about limited government, those who oppose Obama politically, they are increasingly seen as terrorists, and the military is being trained to treat us as such. We see in this article from Kurt Nemo today, gun owners are considered to be racist terrorists who poison school children. Now, he points out last January, we pointed out that they were having a safety exercise in Portsmouth, Ohio. We reported on it, and we knew at the time that it was going to be a premise of individuals who are disgruntled over the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment. Now another organization, Media Trackers, has gotten a, under a Freedom of Information request, they've gotten the actual scenario documents, and it's pretty amazing to see what they put in there. As Kurt Nemo points out, on the chalkboard, this is a teacher who was a terrorist who was cooking up ricin and mustard gas, and on the chalkboard they found, as well as the tables, there were several statements about protecting gun rights and Second Amendment rights. Yes, and at the time it was happening, look at how the local media reported this. They said, although this is a make-believe scenario, it's timely. Two school employees disgruntled over the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment plot to use chemical, biological, and radiological agents against members of the local community. Now, it's interesting that media trackers contacted Ohio National Guard, talked to the communications director there, and he suggested that they were inferring something that wasn't in the documents instead of talking about what was actually in the report. So they read him excerpts from the report and asked him why it wasn't relevant that conservatives would feel unduly targeted by their scenario. And he just said, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Have a good day. Now, these are the documents, the FOIA request documents. And inside the documents, they actually put in a CNN article just so the National Guard would understand politically where these horrible guys are coming from. Now, the CNN article that they put in, why the NRA won't talk gun control with Obama, and this is from 2011. In this article, CNN is portraying the NRA as being these totally inflexible guys who won't talk to Obama, who won't consider any kind of reasonable compromise on the Second Amendment. And Wayne LaPierre says, why should I sit down with a bunch of people who spent their lives trying to destroy the Second Amendment? Exactly. 
because you have to be inflexible when people are trying to compromise the Second Amendment. It's an absolute. It's a fundamental right. It's something that we had before the Constitution. Apart from the Constitution, the Constitution merely recognizes that and restricts the government. But, of course, anybody that puts stuff like that on their blackboard as a teacher, they have to understand, the National Guard has to understand why that person is a category for a person who is a terrorist. And we've seen this before. We saw this in 2009 with the MIAC report, the fusion report that came out right after Obama was elected. And of course, anybody who is a political opponent of him, that would be Ron Paul, Bob Barr, Chuck Baldwin, anybody who would really oppose him. Of course, that wouldn't include, uh, that would include John McCain because essentially they see everything, all the issues exactly the same. McCain is just an older, whiter version of Obama. But anybody that was a real political opponent of his, anybody that had a bumper sticker about them, they were labeled as terrorists. And then we saw in 2010, there was an army scenario about an uprising in Darlington, South Carolina, where they talked about homegrown terrorists. Now, of course, these are people who were Tea Party activists who had taken over Darlington, South Carolina, because, again, they weren't happy with the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment. So they were extremists. They were right wing. They were Tea Party. We didn't learn about that 2010 training scenario until August of 2012 when they started talking about that in, a, in an article in the Small Wars Journal. Now, that was a retired colonel and a history professor. The colonel is still teaching at Fort Leavenworth. But then they told us, don't worry, we're not singling out conservatives, gun owners for persecution or Christians. It was just a few months after that that they had this training scenario in January of last year, which we're now just getting the full FOIA request on. But again, in the meantime, just this last December, we had someone who was a history professor at West Point, at the U.S. Military Academy for the Army, teaching history. And he wrote an article in Esquire, if you'll remember, where he talked about how he was going to pry from your cold, dead fingers your firearms. He says, I hope that you're already dead because we're going to win the information war. We're going to train people. We're going to rewrite history for them, essentially, so that through education, we can take away anybody's right to own guns and say that that's simply a right of the state, a right not of the people. That was the whole thrust of his article. That is what the Army is training on. That's what they're training the police about. That's why we're concerned when we see a shoot up of a transmission station, electrical transmission station, that is very carefully executed, very professionally done, but very carefully and limited way. And then they don't tell anybody about it, but now they're starting to tell people about it. Who are they going to finger as the suspect in this? Michael Savage has talked about false flags. Glenn Beck even thought they were setting him up back in 2010. It's anybody who is real political opposition and their supporters. Going back to this Esquire article, when he says, we will pry your gun from your cold, dead fingers because I'm willing to wait until you die, hopefully of natural causes. See, that's why these guys hang out in the history departments at the military colleges, because those who control the past control the future. And that is a direct threat, just like the threat we got from Mike Martinez when the people held up, stop the gun ban. He said, we're not going after that right now, but hang on to that sign because we're going to make that sign come true. We understand their threats. They're very serious. They're very dangerous. They're directed at any serious political opposition. They're going to try to take the guns. We take it seriously. You should take it seriously as well. Now, in other news, we have an update on the Fast and Furious scandal. Fox News points out that the first de defendant in the Brian Terry murder is being sentenced today, Monday. And Fast and Furious questions still linger. Yeah, one of those is why aren't Janet Napolitano and Eric Holder in the dock for criminal charges? But Fox News puts it this way. They say a Mexican man will be sentenced in federal court Monday in the killing of U.S. Border Patrol agent whose death revealed a botched law enforcement sting. That's putting it pretty mildly. Even the New York Times said it was a false flag directed at the Second Amendment to try to demonize the Second Amendment. And, of course, they wanted to use that as a pretext to show that there was a need to control the flow of arms across the border. And in order to do that, you have to register all guns, all ammunition. Now, today, Obama is seeking to legitimize a drone strike against U.S. citizens. This is an article from Kurt Nemo. He says the Justice Department is currently working with the Obama administration to make a case for attacking